Have you ever wondered why we add sugar and milk to our coffee? For most of us, I'm guessing it's to cover up any of those bitter or off flavors we don't like. But what if we could make a coffee molecule by molecule, picking only the flavors we actually liked? This is exactly the idea behind the first molecular coffee. So get this, there's one startup based out of Seattle, Washington, that's trying to make the first molecular coffee. And what that means is they're handpicking each compound, each flavor molecule that goes into the brew instead of relying on the coffee bean. So instead of seeing coffee as the product from the coffee bean, when you look at coffee, think of it just simply as a dark black liquid that's a mixture of a bunch of different chemical compounds. And it's the chemicals in coffee that make up its characteristic flavor and aroma. Now we do like some of these flavors from the coffee bean, like that nuttiness or that caramelized tone, but the coffee bean also produces a lot of off flavors, things we don't enjoy like any type of bitterness or an acidic tone. So instead of relying on the coffee bean, if we compose our coffee molecule by molecule, we can pick exactly what flavors end up in our coffee, which means we no longer have to cut our coffee with milk, sugar, or cream. Now, Atamo's goal of making the first molecular coffee is not going to be easy. The first thing they have to do, step number one, is map out each and every chemical in normal coffee, in coffee from the coffee bean. And this is hundreds of different molecules. And once they have all the known molecules, they have to go through and see which ones are important for the flavor, aroma, or mouthfeel of coffee. To do this, they used a technique called chromatography. All right, so what in the world is chromatography? Chromatography is simply a separation technique. So we take something complex like our mixture of coffee and we inject it into this long column. And this column can separate the mixture into its more basic components based on something like charge, size, or shape. All right, let's say you have all your chromatography tests run, but this still really isn't enough. Usually you have to sort of analyze each compound even further to figure out what molecules are there in the coffee. For example, you might determine molecular weight using mass spectrometry, or maybe you look at how each molecule reacts with light using UV vis spectrometry. So each of these tests, each of these lab methods sort of build a profile to help you determine which molecules are present. Not only will each molecule in coffee have to be identified, they will also need to be screened to see if they're important for the flavor, aroma, mouthfeel, or color of coffee. And you need to screen each molecule because you only want to include the desired mix of molecules. You don't want to include something that lends any of those bitter or acidic tones to coffee, any of those off flavors. You just want to include compounds that are important for brewing the perfect cup of coffee. So once a tamo has identified each molecule they want to include in their coffee, they then have to find another source, another plant source of each of these compounds. So for example, caffeine is found in the coffee bean, but it's also found in other plants like cola nuts, yerba mate, and the cacao tree. So Atamo could use these other plant sources, extract caffeine to put in their molecular coffee. All right, now let's assume that Atamo can nail down exactly which molecules are important for making a coffee. They still would have one major issue to resolve, and that's what material are they going to use to sort of mimic coffee beans or coffee grounds? 
because coffee grounds are what sort of hold on to those flavor aroma molecules, but let them be extracted with hot water. So it's sort of this balance. So a tamo has to find some suitable material that clings to those important molecules, but doesn't cling so tightly that it would not let the molecules be extracted when hot water is run through. Whatever material a tamo plans to use to mimic coffee beans also has to be crushable because it's the these, these small particle size of coffee grounds that gives the particles a large surface area and makes it really easy for water to extract all those flavor and aroma molecules from the coffee grounds. Now, a tamo hasn't mentioned specifically what material they're going with to mimic the coffee beans, but they have mentioned that they were looking at byproducts of the food industry, maybe something like sunflower seed husks or watermelon seeds. So the ultimate goal of coffee going molecular is that you would have complete control. You are picking exactly what goes into each cup of coffee, which means no more natural variation or inconsistency since coffee is no longer relying on the coffee bean. Right now, it's looking like Atamo can launch their first coffee products in 2021. And they plan to have several different types of coffee from coffee grounds and coffee beans to pods and cold brew coffee. I think a pretty common response to molecular coffee is, you know, this is a super cool scientific feat, but is this really necessary? One thing to keep in mind is actually that the coffee plant is becoming really hard to grow and harvest. And that's because it's not responding well to global warming. So historically, coffee plants, they can only grow 20 degrees above the equator to 20 degrees below the equator. And this is because that's the optimal temperature for the coffee plant to grow at. But as the earth is getting warmer, coffee farms, where they're traditionally located, they're at too high of temperatures now. So farmers, to keep their livelihood, they're moving to higher and higher altitudes to get to that optimal temperature for growing their coffee. But as these coffee farmers keep moving, they are actually having to deforest the land before they can plant their coffee crop. And so with each growing season, the area where the coffee plant can successfully grow is becoming more and more limited. Unfortunately, we are going to have to wait another year for the first molecular coffee to be launched. But what's really cool is this could be the beginning of a molecular trend. It doesn't have to start and stop with coffee. There could be a time in the food and beverage industry when many different products are composed molecule by molecule. So although molecular coffee might be the beginning, who knows where this could end?